Hi guys! In this video, we will be discussing on how to start writing truth table. Um, that is on how to like identify what to write in the first columns and first rows in a truth table. Should it be T, F or how to, how to have the, the order, the order of the T, F. Now, this would be the first consideration. You have to count the number of propositions okay so in this case let's have an example say um our propositions would be say p and q there so in in this example we have two propositions with us p and q now we have the formula two to the power of n where um, n is the number of n is the number of propositions. Let's write that down. N is the number of propositions. Okay, there. So, what's the use of the formula to do the power of n? Now, the answer for this is actually the total number of rows in a truth table. So, this answer, that one, two to the power of n is, this in this example, that would be two squared, which is equal to four. Again, two squared, the exponent is two because we have two propositions, p and q in this example. Now, 4 again, 4 would be the total number of rows in a given, um, in a given, or in a truth table. So, writing truth table this time, we'll have this column headings P and Q there. Then we'll have 4 rows with us, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now that we know the number or the total number of rows, next thing we do would be what to write in these cells. Now, we just have to use the, the, the answer that we got here. And the algorithm is that we constantly divide this answer, this answer here by two until our answer would be one or in the same manner until we we'll fill in all the cells for the last column having the column heading as our proposition so let's apply that our answer is 4 constantly divided by 2 4 divided by 2 the answer is 2 it means that we'll have to write 2 T's 2 F's that combination until we fill in the rows that we have here so two t's two f's there to have a uniform way of having truth table we should always start the combination or the writing of the combinations of t and f we always start by t okay by true next our answer in this column was two and we got that again by dividing this answer right here, 4, by 2. Now, that recent answer, 2, would still be divided by 2. As noted, we are to constantly divide this answer right here by 2 until our answer would be 1. So, 4 divided by 2, the answer is 2. That's why in this column, we have by 2s of t and f. So, that recent answer of 2 divided again by 2, the answer is 1. So finally, we got that answer of 1. And what to, what to do with that 1 again? It means that we are to have a combination of T, F, T, F by 1s of T and F. Again, starting by T. So there, T, F, T, F. There. Now, what if this time we'll have three propositions? Okay, 
Let's have another example having three propositions. Say our propositions this time would be um, P, Q, and R. So same formula to be used, that would be 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of propositions. In this case, our n is 3 because we have three propositions, P, Q, R. So that would be 2 to the power of 3 or 2 cubed. The answer is 8. Again, the answer here would be the total number of rows in our um, in our truth table, excluding, of course, the column heading, the column heading P, Q, R. Okay, so that will have P, Q, R. And we'll have eight rows after that column heading. Let's have that. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what to do next again? We are to constantly divide this answer here by two until we get we'll get the answer of one or until we'll fill in the last part of the column bearing the bearing the preposition column heading. Okay, so 8 divided by 2, the answer is 4. It means that we'll have 4 T's and 4 F's starting with T's. I mean T, yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, Constantly divided by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So it means that we'll have this time 2 T's, 2 F's, until we'll fill in the entire row. I mean, the, all the rows. So there. The recent answer in this column is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So for this column, we'll have 1T, 1F, T, F, T, F, T, F, here. So that's how you start with, or that's how, that's how you start writing a truth table. You just have to consider the number of propositions and just make, just make use of the formula here to the power of n where n is the number of propositions now what's with these first columns or the default columns these columns right here would actually give us all the possible situations that we should consider in the given combination of propositions so let's take a look into that for example if we have combination of the propositions P and Q, we are to consider all the possible situations, right? And those possible situations would be, what if those two, those two propositions are true? And that would be this. Next possible situation would be, what if both of them are false? So we are also considering that. Or the last possible situation would be, what if either of them, but not both, either of them is true. So it means that we are to consider possibility of having P to be true, but F is, I mean, but Q is F. Or the other way around, P this time is F and Q is T. There you go. All the possible situations are considered. Now, how about for this three propositions? Let's check if we are really considering all the possible combinations or all the possible situations for the combination of 
preposition speak you are. So a possible situation would be what if all of them are true? Here. Or it's opposite. What if all of them would be false? Here. Aside from having all of them would be true or T. What if just two out of three would be true? So two of them would be true. That can be P and Q are true. And R would be the false proposition. Or it can be that P and R are true. And it's Q which is false. Or it can also be that Q and R are true propositions and P would be the false proposition. Now, the last possible, uh, possible situation would be what if just one of them is a true proposition and the rest would be false propositions. So in that case, we can have P to be the only true proposition, the rest would be false. Or this row right here, wherein um, Q is the only true proposition and the rest are false. And lastly, it is for this column that we have R, which is the only true proposition, then the rest are false. You see, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Um, this is a good thing if, if you know how to start with the columns and the rows that you need to have in a truth table because you would really consider all the possible situations that you have at hand before you proceed with the next columns as a proof in your argument. Okay, so if you have confusions, feel free to comment in the comment section and um, expect that I will I will have the next video or videos wherein we would discuss on how to how to fill in or how to complete the table as a proof of our argument because in this video we'll only uh, we, we've only discussed on how to start with the truth table so the next videos would be how to complete the entire table as a proof for argument okay see you in my next video then